what we were talking about where all these teachings uh, are coming from and where they're going. And uh, we did a whole series on what we call quantum mysticism in the church. And Sarah and I both have a background in uh, Far Eastern mysticism. Right. I was schooled in the, the Taoist philosophy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an ex-martial arts mm -hmm. uh, person. And uh, as I was reading through a lot of these writings, especially from Chuck Missler and the whole quantum paradigm and all of that, um, I recognized uh, an author by the name of Fritjof Capra. Mm -hmm. He had a landmark book back in the 1970s where he merged uh, spirituality with the mysticism, and that's exactly what these men are teaching. Um, uh, Fritjof, uh, in his book uh, called The Tao of Physics, mm -hmm. is a dead giveaway to me that this is actually where these teachings are going. Um, and it is our concern that these teachings are leading people straight back into the Far Eastern religion. Yeah, leading people into the influences of the East. As uh, we mentioned earlier, there are two approaches to God. Either we have a God who reveals himself, or man has the capacity, because he is in possession of an eternal soul that simply is seeking to be united with God, or reunited with God, soul-to-soul -soul communication and communion. That's the mystical approach. You can do it. All you've got to do is certain things in order to watch it happen. And so the fourfold mystical path is, uh, begins with purgation. You've seen people, especially in uh, Thailand and places at uh, holy days, flagellating themselves with whips on their back. That's called purgation, where you beat your body so that you're going to be receptive to spiritual things. What you're doing is you're punishing your body. Of course, that's but the first stage. The next stage is contemplation, and that involves a two-staged process, solitude and silence. Hmm. You go over, off by yourself, to meditate and think upon God. Uh, some contemplative spiritualists say that, well, Jesus practiced solitude and silence. No, he did not. Now, granted, he went off into solitude at times to pray to his father. But these weren't silent prayers. These weren't wordless prayers. In fact, one of his prayers is recorded in the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John. He was evidently praying within hearing, hearing shot of uh, the Apostle John. But having said that, that's the second stage. That is contemplation. The third stage is illumination. The way I would put it is, this is the, the light and power show that can happen to someone. Mm. This is the enticing moment when the experience takes a hold of you because something is happening that you cannot comprehend, that you do not know what is happening to you. All you know is it's happening. It can't be described because one of the hallmarks of the mystical experience is it goes beyond words. Uh, all it can be is felt. You know you had the experience because you felt it. Hmm. But there's yet a fourth stage, and the fourth hmm. stage is deification. That you actually become deified. You become God. As my friend said to me, Warren Smith one time, he said when he was doing all of this back in the 70s, they would gather around to meditate, and the verse that they used was Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still, which verse, incidentally, is the poster verse for a mystical approach to God. Be still and know I am God. Mm. So there is this idea that deification takes place and you're a God. Because obviously you've had the experience of heaven. You've been there. What is there left to be experienced? Mm. So that's the fourfold mystical path. This type of spirituality is infecting the church, the former evangelical church, all over the place. It's happening. Even now as I speak, it's happening. It is popular. It is pervasive. And people are really into it. 
And I would say to you that that is the influences of the East because there are two approaches to God. Revelation, where God reveals himself to man through Scripture and through the Lord Jesus Christ. And incidentally, one of the definitions of mysticism is that it believes in spiritual experiences outside of any written word because you can't explain it. All you can do is feel it. And so there is this mysticism that has infiltrated the church today and I think is the exact opposite of the spirituality that comes from above, beginning with the new birth, God acting in our lives, God bringing conformity and change to our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given unto us. All of this kind of spirituality doesn't need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit, and so do you.